If you gonna be a boss, be a boss. We're here. We're here. From this point on, everything changes for you, robot trainer. Time for bigger, badder robots with real mechanical complexity, mind-blowing circuitry, and code that will strike fear in the hearts of your enemies. <laughs> Thank Thank you. Welcome to level three. Glad to see you made it. You know what? I always had a feeling about you. Good egg. Tonight, you build and code the first robot of level three. Dark Rider. Here's what Dark Rider's gonna do. It's gonna get you used to three things. A brand new mechanical system called Actobotics. Shout out. A new electrical platform commanded by the Arduino. And an insane step up in code complexity. You'll be using the Arduino language. Cough, cough, C++. Also, an entirely new IDE, Eclipse. Put on your Eclipse goggles, cause we're Gonna use Eclipse. And there'll be some stuff with Git and GitHub, but more on that in a second. There may be a steep learning curve ahead, but if you embrace the suck, then soon you will be a master of all these things. This robot's a step up on all technical fronts, but I believe the most uncharted territory lies in Dark Rider's circuitry. Circuit Masters, rise up! All right, welcome to the new way of building robots. All the magic for level three is gonna happen right here in your Warriors level three kit. Now we're on a mission to make this kit cheaper and to give you more building options than other proprietary kits on the market. So if you're a rogue robot trainer at home who wants to build up your parts collection, I'll leave links in the description that'll help you get set up with your own kit so you can join the party here. And once you got that kit in front of you, it's time to jump into your first build as a warrior. PS, we're gonna try to get PDF build instructions up as soon as possible. All right, step one, you're gonna grab two seven hole channels Channels, two 11 hole channels, eight 90 degree type A dual side mounts, four 3D printed channel end caps created by Ben in 3D on Thingiverse, and 40 quarter inch screws. Woo! All right, you're gonna start by screwing the end caps onto the ends of your 11 hole channels. I'll have a link to the creator of this 3D print file in the description if you wanna print some for yourself. All right, I'm gonna start making the shape of this chassis. Both of the seven hole channels are gonna be mounted two big holes in from the edge. Grab the eight dual side mounts and set two by each channel intersection. Then go ahead and grab those screws and start screwing them into the seven hole long channels. Just gotta make sure the flat side is flush with the edge of the channel. I recommend getting both screws started before tightening them down all the way. To get them started, you can use the longer side of the 764 fourths Allen wrench or hex key. And then the shorter side is gonna give you more leverage for the final tighten. Then you're gonna screw in the other side of the dual side mounts on either side of that second outermost big hole on either end of the 11 hole channels. Be with me. I want you. Step two, you are gonna need six 96 tooth gears, six set screw D hubs, four four inch precision disc wheels. You're gonna want two width tires and two without, four quarter inch hub spacers, 16 three quarter inch screws, and eight half inch screws. You're gonna make two stack ups that look like this, a D hub and a 96 tooth gear. Now screw those together with the half inch screws. Yeah, and since that D hub's threaded, it's gonna act like a nut as long as the last thing the screw goes through. All right, set those aside for a second, and then you're gonna make four stack ups that look like a precision disc wheel, then through the non-threaded holes of the quarter inch hub spacer. Side note, you can do threaded for more security, but using the non-threaded holes is easier than your gear, and then a D-hub. Get those nice and tight. Okay, sweet. Step three, you are gonna need two 12 volt DC motors. Ours are 130 RPM and have little encoders on the end. Two type F motor mounts with the mounting screws, two four millimeter to quarter inch set screw couplers, two one and a half inch shafts, four three inch shafts, 10 bearings, four shaft colors, 10 shaft spacers, eight quarter inch screws, and the chassis and stack ups that you just built. All right, I'm gonna grab the chassis and flip it upside down. It's time to bring it all together. So start by screwing the motor mounts into the motors with the mounting screws. Then I'm gonna screw the motor mount mounted motors six holes up from the edge on the inner sides of the 11 hole channels. I want you. 
Next I'm gonna slide the one and a half inch shafts as far as they go into the couplers. Then get the set screws nice and tight on the flat face of the shaft using that 332 Allen wrench. And then I'm gonna slide the other side of the coupler onto the motor shaft and tighten the set screw on the flat face of the shaft. If you need to, you can gently rotate the output shaft until the flat face is facing up. Next, I'm popping a bearing into the holes, followed by a shaft spacer, then the gear D-hub stack up, which I'm gonna slide all the way back and lock into place with that set screw. Boom! Now I'm gonna pop bearings in four holes away from the motor on either side. Through each of those, I'm sliding a three inch shaft, a shaft spacer, then a wheel stack up onto each, making sure that the gears mesh and tighten down those D-hubs. Finally, on the inside, I'm gonna slide on a shaft spacer and shaft colors, which I'm gonna tighten right up against the bearing to lock the wheels in place. Make sure everything is secure, then flip that sucker over. FYI, I'm gonna treat the end without tires as the front. Also, when talking about right and left, we use the robot's perspective. So this is the left side and this is the right. And step four, you are gonna need four 3 8 inch screws, four nylock nuts, and two L brackets. You're gonna attach an L bracket in the middle of the back cross channel and on the front right channel as well. So your robot's got the bones, but now it needs the bloodstream. It's electrical time. Circuit masters, rise up! Now level three electrical is a different world from those IQs, meaning it's easier for things to break, snap, and blow up. Just kidding. But the worst you could do is fry the Arduino or a motor driver. So just watch and wire carefully, ask a shiz ton of questions, and make mistakes. Step one, you are gonna grab two half inch screws, two washers, two nylock nuts, your base electrical board, and your vertical electrical board. Just attach that vertical electrical board to the base electrical board with the screw screws, washers, and nuts. Now it's time to start mounting some components. Relax and just follow along. First step is to connect two things, our brain, which is the Arduino Mega 2560 board, and the muscle, AKA this motor driver from Pololu, which is in charge of getting commands from the Arduino and turning them into moving the motors. Mount that Arduino with either zip ties or mounting screws in the upper left corner of the vertical electrical board. Now there are three pins in charge of controlling each motor on our motor driver. Inputs one and two, and a PWM pin. All you need to know for now is that the input pins are in charge of controlling motor direction, and the PWM pin controls the amount of power going to the motor. Actually, controlling a motor with PWM signal is pretty cool. PWM stands for pulse width modulation. And it's the process of pulsing power to something to achieve an average power that we want. So in the case of these motors on our drivetrain, sending a PWM signal to the motor will send pulses of electricity to the motor, aka switch power on and off very quickly. So how long that switch is flipped on for, or how long that pulse or burst of electricity lasts for, corresponds to the speed of the motor. So longer pulses, aka a longer duty cycle, is going to translate to faster motor speed. But if you want to dive deep into the world of PWM in your own time, I'm going to leave links in the description description for you. We can control two motors with this motor driver because we have input A1, input A2, PWM A, and then input B1, input B2, and PWM B. So I'm going to hook up all six of these pins along this row of digital pins that have PWM equipped on the Arduino. So input A1 on the motor driver is going to go to pin two, input A2 is going to go to pin three, PWM A is going to go to pin four, and input B1 is going to go to five, input B2 to six, and PWM B27. I try to avoid having the metal clips and the DuPont connectors face each other when being plugged directly next to each other, because I think if they touch that can short a circuit, let me know for sure down below. So the input pins actually don't have to be in a PWM equipped pin on the Arduino. You could plug them into any digital pin, but I like wiring it this way because it keeps them in a nice straight line. So next what we gotta do is we gotta ground the motor driver by connecting its ground pin to a ground pin on the Arduino. Just think of the ground as the key wire that completes the circuit. Nothing can run without it. It's a good thing to remember that all electrical components on the robot have to share a common ground, AKA their ground wires all have to lead back to the same home base. For level three, that home base is the ground pins on the Arduino. Otherwise, that flow of electricity ain't gonna happen. Checkpoint. So if you're a nerdy girls, your Citadel or Stronghold should have access to a designated electrical inspector. Find out who that is for you and then get their official seal of approval on what you've wired so far. Finally, wrap a cable sleeve around this wire bundle. It's gonna keep it nice and organized. Okay, so now it's time to answer one of the big questions. How? How? How do we power everything? The answer lies with our pal, the terminal block. Okay, step one, go ahead and grab two 
five position terminal blocks, two barrier strips that are three fork connectors long in black and red, four half inch screws, and four nylock nuts. The way a terminal strip normally works, it's like a spicy fun alternative to soldering. You screw down a wire on one end, screw down a wire on the other end, and boom, they're connected. And on this particular terminal block, you can connect up to five separate pairs of wires. But what if we want one wire to connect to more than one other wire? And that, friends, is where we use the barrier strips. So when you screw that barrier strip down on one side of the terminal block, it is going to connect these three terminals. So if I hooked up something here, I can connect something to it here and here. So hook up a barrier strip on each terminal block, to mount them on the left side of the base electrical board and leave about four holes in between them. So now, if I were to hook up battery power, keeping positive and negative separate to avoid a spark party, I can access its power in these two places, which is perfect because on Dark Rider, we have two things that need power the Arduino and the motor driver. All right, step two, go ahead and grab one 12 volt to nine volt DC converter with male barrel jacks, one female barrel jack with positive and negative fork connectors, two half inch screws, two washers, and two regular nuts. All right, here's the deal with this converter. So the terminal block gives us access to the battery supply, which is 12 volts. And even though the Arduino can be powered directly by 12 volts, I've read that nine volts is the ideal sweet spot. So what this converter does is it takes in 12 volts and spits out nine volts. Perfect. Just make sure that the converter you have is marked for nine volts and not five volts. You're gonna hook up the positive wire of the female barrel jack to the positive terminal strip and the negative wire to the negative terminal strip. Then you're gonna connect the female jack to the male jack associated with the input side of the converter. Double check to make sure it's the input side. Then I'm gonna do a sneaky little routing around the back and mount the converter to the vertical board with the washers, screws, and nuts. Step three. You're gonna grab two fork connector to male DuPont connector wires. Mine are about six inches in length and one length of cable sleeve. So screw the positive fork connector into the positive terminal block and the negative fork connector into the negative terminal block. Now this part is important. That positive or red wire needs to be screwed into the terminal on the motor driver labeled VIN or voltage input. And the black negative wire needs to be screwed into the terminal on the motor driver labeled GND, AKA ground. And then you're gonna throw that sweet, sweet cable sleeve on it. Step four, you're gonna grab a battery power cord, one battery strap and two zip ties. Okay, so on the pair of terminals closest to you, you're gonna screw in your battery power cord, positive to positive and negative to negative. Then just leave it dangling because we'll plug in the battery last. And also in preparation for the battery, you're gonna go ahead and zip tie down your Velcro battery strap. Checkpoint! You're gonna have the electrical inspector double check and approve the wiring you just did, making sure that all positives connect to positives and all negatives connect to negatives. All right, now we gotta connect the motors to the motor driver. Step one, go ahead and grab four half inch screws, eight regular nuts, and two cable sleeves. The first order of business is to protect these motor wires with a cable sleeve. The time hath come to mount the electrical board on Dark Rider. So you're gonna screw a nut onto each screw, pick four mounting holes, then lock it down with a nut on the other side. And as you're securing, you're gonna feed the motor wires through the gap in your board. If it's hard to tell which is for the left motor and which is for the right, I like to add a little label for easy checking. Okay, step two, you're gonna grab two black male-to-male -male jumper wires, two red male-to-male -male jumper wires, and two cable sleeves. Plug one end of the jumper wires into the matching color port of the motor wires. We only need to hook up the red and black wires because those are in charge of motor power. The other wires coming from the motor are for something on the back of the motor called an encoder. The encoder is my favorite sensor that can tell you how much the motor shaft is rotated. You can use it to accurately control robot movement. We're not gonna use that encoder right now, but it's definitely on the horizon. Anyway, back to motor power. As you can see on the motor driver, the board instructs us to screw in positive, then negative of the first motor or the A motor. So I'm gonna do the left motor first, then negative followed by positive of the right motor. Final checkpoint is upon us. Have your electrical inspector do a final check of the wiring on your motor driver. Then it's time to mount it. Go ahead and grab two half inch screws and two nylock nuts. You're gonna mount that good old Pololu motor driver onto your electrical board. And voila, bask in its glory. Finally, grab a battery with a Tamiya to XT30 adapter, a switch, a half inch screw, and a nylock nut. All right, so you're gonna Velcro that battery down and screw your switch into the cheeky L bracket. 
and make sure it's switched off. Plug one switch connector into the battery and the other switch connector into the battery power cable. Then plug in your Arduino power, get ready to catch the robot in case it has old code loaded on it and flip that sucker on. You should now see the magical lights of the Arduino come to life. Yeehaw! Before we wrap this up, here's the most important thing to know when you're working on robots like this. If you have to change up your wiring for any reason, disconnect power. That means turning it off and unplugging the battery before you work on it. I had to learn the hard way that you can accidentally short your circuit and destroy parts if you are messing around with battery power while you're changing wiring. No battery? disaster free. It's side quest time. If you chose to embark on one or more side quests for level three, be it builder, coder, or circuit master, check the secret description box for instructions on how to complete your side quest. Bye. So now you're ready for coding, robot trainer. Click the link in the end screen, on the end, in the end screen. Click. Do I try one more time? <laughs> okay. If you're gonna be a boss, be a boss. <laughs> A coke addiction. A diet <laughs> coke addiction, that is. <laughs> <laughs>